Hello, Chart Watchers and Decision Point Faithful. Welcome to this Thursday morning, May 28th Decision Point show with your hosts, Carl and Aaron Swenlin. For those of you joining us for the first time today, we do welcome you to the show and hope you will be back next week. All right, we have quite a lot to cover, but let me go ahead and introduce my father, Carl Swenlin. How are you doing today? Pretty good. Pretty good. I, I guess that's better than than good <laughs> or is it less i don't know i'm uh, feeling pretty good today too <laughs> it's uh it was certainly an interesting day in the market here on wednesday we are recording this wednesday afternoon after the market close so let's go ahead and take a peek at our agenda and as you can see as of trading today on wednesday the rally is continuing the question will be whether it will continue. Uh, decision point indicators, we're gonna go over some of those and what they are telling us right now about where we might be headed. And then uh, Carl's gonna talk a little bit about uh, the bear market. I haven't heard that uh, term quite a while since that bear market low. So we'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, additionally, we had, uh, Carl watched, I guess, was it Larry Williams' uh, video? Yeah. On Stock Charts TV. And Larry Williams was talking about uh, the kind of indicator choices you make on a chart. So my dad will expand upon that and what we like to use here at Decision Point. I will finish off with the Decision Point Diamond of the Week. I actually have two that I'm kind of interested in showing you at this point. One that I'm going to be publishing in the Wednesday Diamond Report today, this afternoon and one that I published yesterday. So I'll show you those. And if you aren't familiar with uh, decisionpoint.com, we welcome you to go check out decisionpoint.com where you can learn a lot more about our Decision Point Alert, which we write every day, and the Decision Point Diamond Report, where I give you five stock picks uh, that look good so far. And I call them diamonds in the rough. So we don't, don't know where they're gonna go, but uh, I've been doing all right, I have to say, just looking back on some of these. If we have time, we will go ahead and uh, do a sector recap, but I'm not sure we'll have time with all of this. So let's go ahead and move forward, and we'll start with our decision point scoreboards. Uh, we cover the uh, major indexes, the S&P 500, 100, Dow Industrials, and NASDAQ 100. And as you can see, we do have a new intermediate term trend model buy signal for the Dow Industrials. It's had what we like to call a silver cross. The 20 has moved above that 50-day EMA. And so now it has joined the other indexes with its own buy signal. Now, as you're looking at these scoreboards, you can tell all of them are pretty much the same except for the NASDAQ 100. And this is a golden cross. That's why we got a buy signal here. The 50 was above the 200. We just aren't seeing that quite yet on the other three indexes, but we will investigate the S&P 500 shortly. This week, we did get a new uh, signal on our Decision Point Sector Scoreboard, Energy, XLE, uh, Spider did give us an intermediate term trend model buy signal. Again, that's a silver cross, the 20 crossing above the 50-day EMA. So that one is definitely perked up. The ones really that are still lagging, consumer staples, interestingly enough, uh, being in that defensive area, along with utilities and real estate. But when you see a market like we've had with this rally off of those bear market lows, it isn't really a surprise to start seeing a little bit of rotation out of those defensive sectors. Uh, one interesting fact before I move on, and, and I'll talk to you about it a little bit, Dad, is the fact that technology uh, is starting to lag. We do have these buy signals in place, but I think both of us were noting, uh, especially yesterday in the free article you wrote on uh, stockcharts.com in the Decision Point blog. Can you elaborate a little? Uh, yes. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Technology, I know, has been kind of softening up. I know it was kind of, uh, I wouldn't say a loser today, but it certainly wasn't up as much. And yesterday in the Dow Industrials, two of the major tech companies. Right. The bottom. I, yeah, I had uh, charts to run on that, um, which I can show later. 
Oh, perfect. So I'm giving everybody a preview of what we're going to talk about shortly uh, right. and give you a tease. There are two stocks that we're going to look at in particular there. All right. So, well, let's go look at some charts. So I'm going to pull up the first one that we do usually look at right now. Can, can you see my screen? Yes. Okay, perfect. Uh, sometimes that doesn't work. And at this point, you can see that we have this zone of resistance that I've been paying very close attention to, both uh, Carl and I have. I talked about it a lot in my Market Views TV interview, of course, where I was very bearish <laughs> coming in as we hit that overhead resistance. But I will show you the chart that was certainly steering me that direction. Uh, right now, of course, we've gotten a breakout. I have put this particular support resistance line in here at that corrections low. I have to say, Dad, when I look at this, you know, that looks like a little bump in the road. <laughs> it doesn't look like much, but I know while we were living through that decline, it felt like this. <laughs> yeah. That was before we saw the recent uh, three months. Exactly. So uh, just to give you context, uh, when I was drawing that support resistance line in, I was like, well, is that really a major area of, of uh, resistance or support? And then I looked at it, I'm like, oh, yes, I suppose it is <laughs> at that uh, corrections low in December. So uh, I, we've hit it. We're just, it looks like we may have closed just above it. Uh, so the next area I would be looking for, of course, is the top that we had that uh, double top that formed, but never, of course, really turned into much of a double top formation. But that's exactly where I'm looking at the next check, area of overhead. Check the uh, S&P volume to right here. Notice it's pretty heavy for the last two days. Absolutely. So wonder, is this a blow off or is that confidence pouring into the market? Right. Well, yeah. and I think we had a little bit of a discussion beforehand about um, the money that has been really pumped into the market right now. Right, the Fed, you know, their their packages are definitely accelerating the market upside. Uh, but part, that, part of that crash prevention team, possibly. Right. <laughs> <laughs> they weren't able. They weren't successful this time around. Um, but, you know, the market was really just consolidating in this zone of resistance, and we're finally getting that breakout. And I have to say, looking at the indicators, it has been uh, a bit confounding to me. Uh, as I was telling my dad, I mean, I've been considering, you know, this as a, this area of consolidation as a, as a weak point. And, you know, the fact we couldn't get out of it. So I've been, I've just felt that the market was weak. We were due for a turn. And one of the reasons I was thinking this is really our Swenland trading oscillators have been really on the money. Um, but I have to say they weren't quite there for us this time around. They had topped, uh, they were turning downward as of yesterday. I was seeing a bit of a hint that that it, it wasn't all uh, dreary because we were seeing an improvement on these percent stocks above their 20 day EMA, as well as the percent of PMOs rising at this point. So one of the things I noted too, was that, you know, when we had yesterday's big gap up rally, you know, we didn't see the same kind of evidence that we saw as far as moving these indicators very quickly upward, we, we didn't see that. And in fact, we were seeing both the Swenland trading oscillators turning down. So really interesting uh, to, to, to look at, to talk about. But at this point, we have gotten that breakout and the Swenland tra trading oscillators are moving almost uh, vertically upward toward overbought territory. I'd even say at this point, uh, they, they could be considered somewhat overbought, especially when you look back here. Oh yeah. Um, of course, uh, being in this certainly bull phase, we'll call it that, um, that you, overbought doesn't necessarily mean anything. But right. You should, you should uh, tighten up when you see it and just be prepared. Absolutely. You know, this, like I said, I've been not liking what's been going on the last three or four days in the market and especially last week. 
And so uh, one of the ways that I help myself, at least in my trading, is I, I start tightening up my stops and really start reevaluating my targets. You know, am I at a point where I want to take some of my profits or does a chart look good enough that it can, you know, withstand the winds per se of the market? Uh, so it worked out well, obviously the, the stops, uh, I think I only hit one of my stops uh, today and the rest are, I hit most of my price targets. So I'm gonna have to go back and, and look at that more closely. But right now, I mean, all of these indicators are starting to move straight up. So can't really argue with that. Let's see, I have here, that's this one. I did wanna look just briefly at, at the, this is a 10 minute bar chart. And I, I've been following this to give me sort of a hint of what to expect the next day. Of course, looking at that 10 minute bar chart yesterday, I saw this double top. I saw it execute at the end of the day. Everything really was pointing bearish. And the fact that we had that gap up day, yet the Swenland trading oscillators were still turned down. Um, again, I, I was rather surprised when I didn't see this continue. I, of course, early in the morning, it made sense. But notice we didn't even close that gap from Tuesday and we started back up. We formed a rising wedge. These are bearish formations and your expectations would be a breakdown. Perfect time for it to have done that right here at these tops. And instead it uh, managed to move itself out and continue higher. So hard to argue with that kind of price action. Uh, this is the 10 minute bar PMO. And as you can see, still rising, all that volume poured in at the end of the day as well. So interesting to look at. All right, I've looked at my indicators. I'm gonna pass the, uh, the, the baton to you, or the, as we used to say, the uh, controls of the airplane. Great. <laughs> okay. The yesterday, uh, I was surprised to see Apple and Microsoft did so poorly considering how the rest of the market did so well. And they actually finished up at the bottom of the heap in the end of the day. And it, this is a, from my article, if you read it, I'll try not to linger too long, but uh, just looking at Apple, double top, rising, uh, well, kind of wedgy, but Mainly it's a rising trend channel, topping, PMO, volumes really poor uh, against, you know, it's almost equaling there in price, but the volumes way they have the, the uh, uh, OBV. Microsoft, just kind of looking at the same chart on those, that's already got a PMO sell signal, uh, PMO down through the the uh, signal line. And then the OVV, we're really basically confirming it's not quite there, but neither is, neither is this price. Yep, makes sense. What did they do today? Um, I, I haven't looked at those charts. I'm uh, let me look. Curious. Yeah, if you just go back to the article and click on one of them, that'll work. I got the... There it is. No, that's the wrong one, here. Oh, there's, there. there's Apple today. Uh, it was down again, but it, it uh, basically, it did close up, but it still didn't do so great uh, today. And let's see, Microsoft. Yeah, that PMO, yuck. Uh, same deal, yeah. down, but it, it closed uh, near the high for the day. I've liked that software space, but I have to say that short-term double top, uh, is is certainly not uh, looking too good. Right, right. And the PMO, same same thing. It's overbought. Yeah, here's one I like to look at: the uh, percent of uh, stocks above the 20 EMA, 50 EMA, and 200 EMA. Um, it, it has been lagging, but last few days it's. Uh, Basically, we don't have any divergences. This is slightly diverging, but at this mirror, it's 91. So when you get up there, that's just that's just an insignificant amount. 
Absolutely. Yep, very overbought. Here's uh, the bullish percent on the uh, S&P. Uh, here we still have a significant divergence. That's 74 versus 90-ish up here. So um, there's a negative divergence, but they're, they are disappearing. Yes, absolutely. Oh, All right. yes, I wanted to show, I wanted to show, we're talking about Larry Williams saying that you, you should, if you're going to have a bunch of indicators that should be telling you different things, it's, you, know, you, you wouldn't set up a chart with the PMO, PPO, and uh, MACD, because they're all essentially the same thing. Uh, slightly different the way they move, you know, but as long as you know they're different, then, then you want to zero in on the, the, the really the note differences, well, that's one thing, but normally you wouldn't stack those three indicators on the same chart. But I, here on our um, sector charts, I have uh, stacked up quite a few indicators. The PMO, that's our momentum indicator. OBV, uh, we know that's uh, a unique uh, purpose. Um, Silver Cross indicator, that's 2% of uh, stocks with 20 EMA above the 50 EMA. Uh, and for longer term, the Golden Cross, which is 50 above the 200. Now the bullish percent index and the Silver Cross are similar in terms of the time frame that they're being, uh, they're addressing. But as you can see, the the bullish percent behaves quite a bit differently. It's more erratic. Uh, and the reason is the way it, it, it's looking at uh, point and figure buy signals. And, uh, uh, and obviously it's more sensitive. And I noticed this happened on a number of the sectors. Uh, when we hit the, the low, we were getting a positive divergence on the, on the, uh, bullish percent index. And I'm like, well, I never noticed that before. Hmm. And uh, that certainly gave us an early warning that we were hitting a bottom. And uh, unfortunately, I didn't notice this till after the fact, but uh, <laughs> you learn something new every day. Uh, but again, it's uh, we're looking for negative divergences on, on the, that indicator. And we got it. Right here, we got a negative divergence at the top and pulled back. Uh, we're not we're not seeing that uh, so far on, on this most recent top. But here we have uh, we have the percent of stocks above their 20 EMA. Basically, that shows if it's above the 20 EMA, the price is above 20 EMA. That's uh, short-term strength being demonstrated, and the same. Is true for the stocks above 50 EMA, and that addresses the intermediate term. And we address the so that's why I picked those. Those that's I, I could get to look at a lot of things here, and they are they're all giving me different information and, and for the same information in different time frames. Yes, and it is and one of the things too that I would add is. When, especially when you're looking at your, you know, your stock chart, the stock charts, the ones you want to invest in, your ETFs and all of that. It's really a good idea not to have, you know, window after window after window of indicators because it, you are going to get some overlap like we were talking about. And a lot of times it can confuse you into what you want to actually do. So you need to find those indicators that work for you, uh, preferably not a huge amount of them because it just makes trying to process all of that information even harder. So that would be my, my uh, right. addition. As I spoke of the beginning uh, um, here is that you know, for like the PPO, the PMO and the MACD, if you had those all up there, 
plus some others, and you can say, well, I've got three indicators giving you the same thing. Well, no, you've got essentially one type of them. You've got three types of the same indicator giving you three different answers, which, you know, you should only count one. Right. <laughs> the one you trust the most. And of course, we always recommend the price momentum oscillator, the PMO, which we find superior to the others, of course. The others are not invented here. <laughs> exactly. Um, with the talk, that um, Greg and Grant Morris published an article this weekend, which I read, and uh, they talked about when is the bear market over? And uh, I, I, it gave me a new perspective on that, but there's, there are two ways you could say once the, the market has rallied 20% off of the bear market low, that you're out of the bear market. They say, and other people say that when the, uh, when you recovered all that was lost and, and making new highs, then the bear market is over, which I think is, is most useful in this particular case. No, no definition is going to meet every criteria, but I think it's, you know, I'm, I'm having doubts about this, this rally, but you know, uh, it could it could peter out before it ever makes the new highs. Um, but anyway, if it doesn't make new highs, then that's a new bull market, and you measure that bull market from this bear market low. Yep, and that double top, it just really looked like it was time for the market to fall apart, and instead we got two gap ups. <laughs> well, what we got was a consolidation. Yes, and then that gap up out, and then the gap up we had to uh, yesterday. It's just, um, it's it's fascinating. I mean, we certainly had indicators that were bullish, um, but the majority, uh, like I said, it's been um, really interesting to see this. And and you know, there are outside influences, obviously, um, besides the technicals. And I think this is a really good example of that. Right. Right. All right. Um, did you have anything else? And otherwise, I'll go over to my diamond of the week. Much, yeah, you, should, you can take it back. All right. I think uh, people will recognize both of these names. I'm going to give you a sneak peek into what uh, I did yesterday in my diamonds report and what I'm doing today in my diamonds report. And the first one up is Coca-Cola. And actually it didn't come up on my scan results, but Coca-Cola Europe came up on my scans. And when I compared the two charts, I actually liked the KO Coca-Cola chart a lot more than the others. And here are a couple of reasons why. We had a breakout of this descending wedge or falling wedge that's a bullish pattern. And I liked that bar. This was yesterday on Tuesdays when I presented it. So that was the, the OHLC bar I was going off of. We had nice volume coming in almost above its uh, average there that uh, I track. I think this one's, yeah, the 50 day moving average for volume. And so we almost got up there. We're seeing volume coming in, uh, which I like PMOs on the buy signal. It isn't above zero just yet, but it certainly looks like it's headed there. And you can see RSI is now above 50 on the breakout. And today it, it had a pretty good day. Uh, upside target, you know, let me go ahead and do a little bit of an inspection tool here. So here's where we were at. And if I, oh, let me get this, there we go, okay. So just up to there is about an 8% move. So currently, if we look at it, we're going to have uh, a 6% to get to that overhead resistance from where we started before. But if we can get that gap back here covered, and I'm going to show you that gap right there, I would be watching that gap very closely once we hit this area. I do think we'll, we will get up there and, and test that resistance level. The question is whether it's going to close that gap. So if I had it and, and it did get up to this point, I would be watching very closely to see if that gap gets covered. I always in my diamonds report set a stop level just so that you have an idea of 
the percentages and, and where they land. And in this case, an 8% stop would put you pretty much at that, um, at that area of support on the low that we had in May. So I thought this one looked pretty good, uh, the Coca-Cola. Not thrilled, I will admit, with the scooter, the stock charts technical rank. I do like to usually get my um, stocks out uh, of 75 and above is my preference. Um, but I, I'm gonna go ahead and, and uh, let that go uh, on this somewhat bottom feeding opportunity that I think is set up. Starbucks is the other one I think is looking really interesting. And this one's gonna be in tonight's Diamonds Report. Uh, we got a little breakout. We did pull back today on that. And it was a 1% move. And you can see in the thumbnail, we did close very close to the top of the range. So it makes me feel okay. If we had closed at the bottom, I would probably have second thoughts about this one. But you can see uh, we got a whipsaw, um, buy, sell, and then buy signal came in. And we're starting to move back up. Uh, might look a little on the overbought side, but really when you compare the levels that we've seen on the PMO, uh, it's been much lower. Uh, negative 10 is what we're looking at here. So the top of the range, I think, could certainly stretch out. I really like the fact that the OBV bottoms are rising and back here especially because they were mostly flat uh, and, and we were seeing that increase in volume, which is a uh, a good sign. Right now, I'm just a little concerned. We haven't gotten that breakout just yet, but I think this could be an interesting one uh, with Starbucks. Today, I'm focusing mainly on restaurants and bars. It was a, a really great area today. Uh, lots of talk about it on the business channel, so I thought I'd focus on it, and I did go through, and uh, Starbucks was one of the ones that I saw that I found was, was pretty interesting. All right. I don't know if uh, you have any comments on these. <laughs> I, we usually don't talk diamonds, so. <laughs> no, I, I don't. I don't see anything uh, wrong with no, no. wrong yeah. with your uh, analysis. I think is well, I would hope that you'll tell me at the end, and you should always agree with me on air. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So anyway, all right, so let's take a, a look. Maybe let's go over. We have just about three minutes, two minutes left. Uh, I'm just gonna pull up the candle glance for uh, the sectors, just so we can get a full page look at them. I think this is an excellent way to review them. You can just pull up the sector summary and down here, you can have that um, candle glance. And I have it set up with my own style. And you can see there's your PMO and the 20, 50, and 200 day EMA. So just giving this one a peek, remember XLE, we did just get that 20, 50 day positive crossover. As far as looking at these sectors, are there any in particular that are drawing you in? Like me, no. No. <laughs> um, some of the interesting ones, I think financials are looking rather interesting. Uh, I'll pull up that chart and tell you why. We've gotten that breakout from those two tops we had back in April, and it does look like a, almost like a hammer formation. Uh, we closed near the top. Uh, we can see that RSI is now over 50. So I have to say the financials are looking pretty interesting right now. And if you go back a little bit here, let's see. Well, we do have these rising bottoms. I thought maybe this one was uh, rising, but now my eyes are fooling me. But we are seeing uh, rising bottoms on that OBV. Uh, I, I think it's a really interesting chart. I think financials are starting to wake up a bit and I find so that- It's like I said, a rotation. Yes, it's time, financial Because it was time. very strange uh, part of the day, at least, that see the, the Dow was way up. And, yes. And the S&P was flat. So you don't yep. see that often. All right. Well, that does it for today's show. I hope everybody has a great uh, trading day on Thursday. We will see you next week. Happy trading. Hey guys, Grayson Rose here with StockCharts.com. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Remember, if you did, give us a like down below, leave us a comment, we'd love to hear from you. And most importantly, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for daily content from an incredible collection of technical analysts and financial minds. We'll see you back here very soon. Happy charting, my friends.